Hey everyone, do you like playing a lot of ranged champions but are getting sick of champions like Fizz, Katarina, or Echo? Or do you exclusively like playing melee champions but struggle against stuff like Malzahar because he just has to press R to counter you? Well don't worry, with the right game plan you can win any of these matchups with ease. And you're in luck, today I'm going to give you both game plans. One for you ranged champion lovers and one for the melee champions. You can use these in almost any matchup in mid to make it extremely easy. Then we're going to go through three different replays where I'm playing on a smurf and gold to show you how to use the game plans and to see the mistakes lower elo players make. So let's go over the range game plan first. Mission 1, slowly push the wave. Slowly pushing gives you a huge minion wave which will defend you from all ins. Mission 2, harass when they go for last hits. It can just be auto attacks but when they go for minions you want to poke them. And then mission 3, play around your important cooldowns. Every ranged champion has an important cooldown that will keep them safe. So think Lux Q, Syndra E, TFW. Basically, their CC ability to keep the enemy from all inning. If you use it, you have to play safe till it's back up. Alright, now for the melee side. Mission 1, let the wave push. Melee champions don't come online till level 3 most of the time, so it's best to just let the wave push at level 1. Mission 2, stay healthy. As the wave pushes in, you need to make sure to have enough health for mission 3. And then mission 3, after the wave crashes, all in at level 3. After the wave crashed on the tower, melee champions hit level 3 and can look to all in. We have the game plans, let's get into our first replay here where I'm playing Lux vs Fizz. I picked Lux into Fizz because it's a Fizz favorite matchup and I wanted to show how simple the matchup is with how many mistakes lower elo players make. So as laning starts, I auto attack one melee minion down to prevent all three melee minions from dying at the same time in a few seconds and to start mission 1. If they are all dying at the same time, I'll have to use my E to get them, which I don't want. I want to use my E to harass Fizz. I missed my first E on him because I didn't wait for him to go for a last hit before using it. This is something you really should get into a habit of doing. If you just throw abilities out randomly, you'll run out of mana and won't connect with most of your skill shots. After I miss the E, we have the first and biggest mistake I see from melee champions when playing in this elo. Watch how this Fizz just walks up past his ranged minions for literally no reason at all and just starts auto attacking. I hit him with an auto attack, then collect two of my last hits, then hit him with two more autos as he runs away. This is part of mission 2 on the melee side. You shouldn't be taking any free damage. The only time you take damage as the melee champion is when you walk up for a last hit and get punished. Anyways, after that, Fizz walks up for a last hit, so I hit him with my E, then walk up to auto to proc my passive if he doesn't back away, but he does. As the wave pushes in, look how Fizz is walking up for this melee minion, so I'm ready to punish him for mission 2 and auto attack him. These may seem small, but the auto attacks really add up early on. If you can punish them with an auto every time they go for a last hit, and throw in some abilities as well, they'll get low fast. Now I hit level 2, and look at the minion wave, it's stacking up nicely, and I'm going to crash the whole thing on the tower so Fizz has to last hit all of these while I poke him down. He should just be waiting at his tower, but he walks up for last hit here, so I throw my E with an auto to poke him some more for mission 2, and then collect my CS. Now, as I crash the wave on the tower, I want to look to poke Fizz as much as possible. When he walks up for this minion, I throw my Q, auto him, then E and auto again, taking a huge chunk of his health. This is exactly what you want from these first few waves, if you get a lot of harass down, you're playing the matchup properly. We all know you can get ganked now, so I'm going to drop a ward on my top side, which is where I think the enemy jungle will come from. Before we keep going though, let's jump to another replay and come back to this one in a bit. Let's compare the first three levels of this game to the one we just watched. I'm on the Blanc for Silas here. You should see a lot of similarities to the previous replay from both sides. First wave, I'm auto attacking one minion down like before. Silas walks up to last hit minions, so I auto him a lot. Use my W to proc electrocute and just keep auto attacking because he thinks it's okay to just stand here and auto these minions. He's lost half of his health in the first level. If you notice, because I got the push advantage and I'm last hitting, just like in the luck replay, I'm stacking up a big wave. In this replay, my wave is going to crash later on than the previous one. The reason for this is Silas was doing a lot of damage to the minions, but he pays the price for it. But around the same time as the previous replay, I drop a ward on top side since junglers can be looking to gank soon. Now it's back to my game plan, slow pushing and harassing until I hit level 3. Now that I'm level 3, I can really chunk the Silas with a full rotation of abilities. He should be standing back at tower waiting for the wave to shove in, just like the Fizz should have been. But he walks up for a last hit, and I'm ready to punish right away and go in with my Q, W, and auto attack to chunk him. Then I continue auto attacking when he walks up too far for no reason, like he has been, to right here. Look how I back up to make Silas think he can walk up for this last hit, then prep my W like this. He's been walking up for CS all game that he shouldn't go for, and he's low enough to kill now. So as soon as he walks up, I W, E, Q, and Ignite, and get the kill. The kill is great, but that's not even the biggest deal here. Look at this minion wave. 
Because Silas didn't play towards his game plan of letting it push, stay healthy, and let it crash on the tower, he died before this massive wave even crashed, and he's going to lose it all. The lane is completely over at this point. Alright, so we've seen two different examples of me playing range versus melee in the first three levels, but I know you're probably thinking, but skill capped against Fizz, before level 6 is easy, after level 6 is hard. And how do we play from the melee side? Don't worry, we're going to cover both. Let's first jump into another replay, but this time I'm playing from the melee side. I'm playing Katarina versus Syndra in this one. Syndra is a huge lane bully, the best in the game right now. At level 1, she's a 40 mana, 4 second cooldown, 70 base damage ability that she can just spam. So at level 1, look what I'm doing. I'm just standing way back here out of vision of her, not giving her any chance to harass me at level 1. It's actually this easy. Once these first few minions get low, I walk up and just use Q to grab them. Notice how she isn't even trying to harass me while I do it? If I were on Syndra, I would be standing a lot closer, it would know Katarina is going to use Q to grab the CS, so I'd be ready to punish. Then, for the next melee minion, I'm used to high elo, so I'm walking back and forth waiting for Syndra to try and Q me when I go for it, but she doesn't even try and I just grab it for free. Syndra isn't doing anything that I was doing when I was playing the range side. She needs to be harassing every time I go for a minion. Think about it, I literally don't have a way of out trading her. My Q does less damage, has a higher cooldown, and I'm melee. This is the case for nearly every melee versus range matchup, and is why you don't want to be looking to do much until level 3. But on the range side, your goal is to get an advantage before that point. Alright, now when no minions are low, I'm not walking up and taking any free damage like the Silas and Fizz did. I'm standing back for missions 1 and 2 until a minion does get low, and then I use my Q to grab it. Syndra hits level 2 though, instead of walking up with a level disadvantage and losing half my health like the others did, watch how easy this is. I simply just let it go. Crazy concept, but that's it. It's fine to give up some minions to make sure I have enough health to all in at level 3. Now I hit level 2 and my Q is up, so I use it to grab a minion before backing up again and grabbing two more under tower. So you should see a big difference here. In the first two waves I have taken literally zero damage from Syndra. Partly because she doesn't know what she's doing and I'm not giving her any openings. Now the wave is going to crash on the tower and I'm going to farm it safely just like before and wait till I hit level 3. Now that I hit it, I can look for an all-in. Syndra's E is the only thing that can stop me from killing her, so I'm just waiting for her to use it. In higher elo, you have to bait it most of the time as they'll save it. In lower elo, as in diamond and below, they will just use it for no reason, and that's what I'm waiting for. Alright, here we go. She used her stun, now it's time for both of us to look for mission 3. She should be playing very far back, farming safely until her E is back up. If she doesn't, I can just go all in. So let's see what happens. I pop a potion first since that combo took around half of my health. Then as soon as she walks up into range, even with a huge health disadvantage, I go all in. I mess up my combo just a little bit and miss one of the daggers, but still 100 to 0 her and got greedy with ignite thinking I would kill without it, but it barely doesn't kill. If I ignite her, she obviously dies, but she's still forced to leave the lane and just loses it from this. Either way, do you see how easy it is? Play safe, wait for level 3, wait for them to use their important ability, all in. I could have done the same thing on any melee champion, Diana, Talon, Echo, Fizz. This looks so much different than when I was playing the ranged side of things. Alright, we still have one more thing to go over. Skill capped, Fizz level 6 is OP, I can't do anything to it, just nerf Fizz, whatever. Let's jump back to the Lux vs Fizz gameplay. We left off here, where I dropped a ward topside. I played the lane out doing the same things as before, harassing when we went for last hits, and poked him out of lane easily, I didn't even kill him. I end up recalling with a 30 to 15 CS lead with a level advantage. Because of this advantage that I got in the first 5 levels, which you should always get versus Fizz, there is no way for him to kill me. He hits me with his ult here, I just use my W and don't even need a barrier, there's no way he kills me here, he just needs to run away. Also, I'm playing towards where my jungler is to bait the Fizz into overextending. He tries again later on, but definitely can't kill me when I'm holding the wave near my tower, then tries again when I get back to lane, it doesn't even come close, I still have my barrier and stopwatch. If you get a lead early on versus these strong level 6 champions like Fizz, Zed, or Talon, they won't be strong enough to one shot you unless you really mess up. Alright guys, so as you can see, with these two simple game plans, you can easily win any range with melee matchup from either side. I didn't do anything crazy mechanically in any of these games, I just punished when I was supposed to and followed my game plan. In Diamond and Below, the enemy laner is constantly misplaying, and if you can learn to exploit it like this, you can smash lane easily in any matchup. If you want to truly take your lane phase to the next level and learn how to convert leads into easy wins, then you need to check out our site skillcap.com. 
We have by far the largest catalog of guides on the internet with well over 800 and they are the exact quality you see here on YouTube. We've curated them into over 100 epic courses and we release more than 10 new guides every week. We're so confident you'll improve, you can input your rank before signing up to see where we think you'll climb. If you don't hit that rank while actively using our service, you can claim a refund, so there's no risk. Sign up today to finally get the rank you've always wanted. That's going to bring us to the end of this one. Let us know if you enjoyed the dual missions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.